Donald Trump's looking more like the Republican nominee for president all the time. Yes, he is. But could all the king's men be the key to stopping his reelection in the general? Now, that's a good question. And it was posed one by Sarah Longwell of the Bu uh, Bulwark. As she argues in her new op-ed, it's time for former Trump officials to come out against him. Longwell writes, quote, if we want to stop a Trump restoration and the promised MAGA dictatorship, it's going to require building a coalition of people who understand the stakes. And there are no messengers better equipped to convey the peril of a Trump presidency than those who lived firsthand on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I love the sentiment. It makes me feel so good inside, and it makes sense. But those people don't exist. Am I right or am I wrong? Tell me where they are, because the last they time exist. I... Saw... They're all the people who come out and have done one think piece, and they need to be doing it as a consistent drum. They do. But then they stand up on a stage in front of America, and they raise their hand and say, I will vote for the convicted felon. Okay. So I, I don't... Tell me where they are. In the piece, <clears throat> Longwell, she pulls out specific names, put them on the screen. She, she writes to servicemen like Mark Milley, the party loyalists like Betsy DeVos, the candidates like Mike Pence. Now, I don't really know if Betsy DeVos is in opposition to a Donald Trump re-election. Mike but maybe Pence? She is. I did, now, and Mike Pence is one of his senior aides just went to go sign on and work for the Trump campaign, Nick Ayers. So, but everybody who knows Nick Ayers knows that, like, that is a... I'm not surprised. Uh, I... I what this is just like the the conversation that we have about oh the candidates is not comp there was no competition in this primary there wasn't a competition because they refused to compete exactly what if these what if, what if all of the people that know better the people that whisper privately and it's not a whisper they are loudly shouting it they're just like please don't put me on the record and the Republicans people who work for Donald Trump who were in the administration that say I think he's crazy and he should never be allowed back into the Oval Office those people have to come out and speak out aggressively and often. They do, but they yeah. won't. And and they and they do need to do that, yeah. but they won't do that. And Why that's not? well that's that's not to ask you to speak for no, all no, of but, them, but that's but, a yeah. that's a seven year problem. That's a seven year problem. And and the reality of it is, particularly when you're looking at the political leadership, because that's where it is. I've I've made this case from the very beginning. At the end of the day, when you go back and look at history, those moments where you could go right or left, mm -hmm. up or down in the country, for good or bad, leaders in the Congress, leaders across the country stood up and said, this way, or no, we're not going to do that. Here, they've just remained silent or acquiesced to it. And I think that's what drives a lot of this energy around Trump. There, not only are there no consequences for his behavior, there are no leaders that will call out that behavior to even get to the point where we would want to impose consequences. Can you tell me what you think is happening with Elise Stefanik and Tim Scott? Elise, Stef Elise Stefanik and Tim Scott want to be Donald Trump's vice president. It is without hesitation or doubt. So they will do this, the sycophantic dance. They will sound stupid defending him. They will, they will do whatever they think will ingratiate them to Donald Trump. And that, to me, is not leadership. That is, that is pathetic, in my view. But that's what the party wants to see. They want to see you make that level of commitment. And those of us out here who won't, we're supposedly the crazy ones. Mm. No, boo, that ain't how it is. I have long since said that the problem with so many people is that they do not know where their personal or their professional line is. I used to be a spokesperson for a very long time, and there were just some things I would not do or say. These folks got to find their personal and professional line and quit, because, honey, it's looking bleak. I look, you get the democracy you vote I'm for. Like, I'm like Simone, during break, you're going to tell us what those things are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unauthorized autobiography. All right, real quick. On Tuesday, Rachel Meadows is going to lead special team coverage of the New Hampshire primary. Steve Kornacki is also going to be there.